G'day, Mr. Fitz here. Hope you're going well. In video three, we are going to take you through the sketch tool of SOLIDWORKS. This is the first and one of the most important tools to learn because it is the basis of our model and we'll use this over and over again to design. From this point forward, I suggest the idea of putting this video side by side with the software and you personally having a go at doing what I'm doing. You can stop, pause, rewind, um, but this is a good chance to have a go at designing. We're going to model this basic little block here in this video. Back to our basic workflow, we'll keep referring to this. We are going to focus on the sketch tool here at the start, and we're going to also use the extrude tool. Let's go to the software. So with a new file open, we're going to go to the sketch tool. So under sketch on the ribbon tree, click on sketch. Little highlight here is that underneath each icon, when you hover over it, it tells you what it does. So create a new sketch. Once you click on this icon, on the left here, this feature tree converts to a basically like a little question or information box. And this gives you some information of what to do next. So choose or select a plane onto which to create a sketch for the entity. The general rule for a sketch is that it needs to be on a flat face. So our model starts with these three planes and you can choose any of those three to start. Once you have a model that has flat faces, you can sketch on those. But we're gonna start with the, let's choose the top plane. It doesn't really matter, we can always rotate this. Once you click on that plane, you'll notice that the view basically zooms in so you're looking straight down onto that 2D face. Another clue that tells you what's happening now, you're inside the sketch tool. The sketch toolbar is now available and all of these features are now available for you to use. Plus at the top right here, you've got this little icon, which means finish the sketch or cancel the sketch. So cancel will take you back to the model screen and cancel any changes you've made. You'll also notice here under the feature tree now, you've got this little sketch underneath this line. This line is basically like a timestamp. This is where we are, so we are about to create this sketch. On the right side too, according to perhaps how you've set up your SOLIDWORKS, hoping that you can see this on the school computers, these here are a range of little shortcut icons of the features within the sketch. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to draw some lines inside our sketch. Start with grabbing the line tool. Now, under this, you've got a few options. You can create a center line, a line, or a midpoint line. We're going to use just a standard line. Now, this is quite simple. It's a click and release. So I'm going to draw a line from the center point. I hover over the origin here. See that little icon that pops up? This is going to snap this line to the origin, which I want to do right in that corner. Now. If I let go of my click, I can now drag my line to where I want it to go. The software is quite intelligent. It tries to predict what you're trying to draw. So if I draw, go up vertically, it wants to draw a vertical line, that little icon pops up. So I'm gonna go up here. Now it doesn't matter the dimensions of our part to start with. I'm just gonna roughly draw what I want this thing to look like. So don't be concerned about the scale. I'm just gonna go up and go click. I'm going to come across and go click, 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 click. Now, at any point in time, if, if I want to get out of the, the line tool, I can just press escape. Escape is a shortcut to get out of a command. Or you can press again on the line tool. So once you start a line or an arc or a square, it's going to keep on trying to build it until you press escape. So I'm going to go out of that. Um, that's what I've drawn so far, but I've forgotten that I must close it. So in order to do an extrude, you must have a closed loop. At the moment, this is all open. So if I go back and click on the line tool, I'm gonna to add another line from that point back to my start. And you can see as soon as I click that, it detects that I've got a closed loop and it shades it to give you an indication. I'm still in the line tool now, you can see my mouse cursor looks like a pen, so I can keep drawing lines out here somewhere, but I don't want to, so I'm gonna press escape. And if I wanna undo what I've just drawn, 
you've got the undo key here. So just like other Windows programs, the shortcut is Control and Z on the keyboard, or you can just go undo to undo these lines. Another little way that you can delete something is if I click on it, I can also press the delete key on my keyboard. That will remove it. Cool, now I've got this shape. Looks kind of what I want. I can scroll in and out, remember to the view, so I can get this on the center of my screen, or I can click on this icon to center it. If I want to as well, I can click the middle mouse button and rotate my mouse, and that will let me view this in three dimensions. But I want to stay in this view orientation. Now, a few things to notice in the sketch tool. Whenever you draw something, these little icons here are available. So if you hover your mouse over these, it's telling you what's called a geometric constraint. So this line, for instance, it has a horizontal constraint. So if I click and move this line, you can see that it just moves it according to its constraint. So I can't make this anything but horizontal because it's currently horizontal. This line's vertical, horizontal. So as I said, the program's quite intelligent to predict what you're trying to do with this design. If I click on a corner, I can click and move this point. You can see that these two lines are joined. So it, it's assumed that these two points are connected. And basically anything that's blue in my sketch will allow me to move it. Now if I try to move this line here, I can't actually move this because I've pinned it to the origin of my part. So likewise, I can move this up and down. You'll notice that this line, in fact, is black. Black means that it has some form of constraint. So I can't actually change much information on this line. I can probably change the length of it, but I can't actually move it in space. Whereas if I click and drag this line, I can move it kind of anywhere I want to. So things in the sketch will move according to the information you've given it. So at the moment, this is pretty freeform. Now, if you click on a line or any feature, on the left here, it will give you the properties of this. So at the moment, this is horizontal. It has a length, so it's a pretty random number. I haven't given it any information yet. I can also make this what's called a construction line, which means that if I do that, this is now just a reference. It's not part of the actual thing I'm trying to work with. So I can toggle that on and off. And you can see, if that's a construction line, this no longer is a complete loop. So I'll keep that on there like that. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to add some dimensions to this. Now, one thing that I'd like to do with this, in fact, is I want this line and this line to be the same length. So what I could do is go Dimension. Now I want this to be, click on dimension, sorry, back one step. This tool here is called the dimension tool, also lives up there. If I click on dimension, if I click on a line with this highlighted, you'll see that when I drag my mouse away, it gives me a dimension. Now I must click once more to place that dimension. And once I place it, it's going to ask me in this box here what the size is. So currently it's 43 point something or other millimetres. I want this to be 30, so you can type 30 and click on the tick to confirm. You'll see it moves to 30. Now I want this one to be 30 as well. Now I'll show you a little tip. If I escape out of my dimension icon that I'm currently in, what I can do is you can multiple select in the software. So if I want to choose that line there, if I press the control key on my keyboard, so very bottom left of your keyboard, press and hold control, and then click on another line. I've now chosen on the side here, line three and line six, and I can actually do a few cool things here. I can add a relation. So I want these to be equal, and you'll see, that they're now both the same. So let's move that to size. Now, I also want that line and this line to be equal. So control, click, click, equal. They both moved. 
So according to this, I've only got one more blue thing in my model. And if I move that, you can see that they both move together because these two have that equal constraint. You can see that there's now visible. You can click and delete that if you want to get rid of that constraint. It's that little icon. I'm going to add one more dimension here. So I'm going to click this line. I'm going to tell it how long it is. So I'm going to make this line 80 millimeters, 80. Click on there, and you'll see that it will move to size. Now these are editable. If I click on this, double click, it will bring back my dialog box and I can change this. So I can make that 40. I've changed my mind, I want it to be 40 now. And it changes my model to suit. Or I can go back, I want it to stay at 30. Press undo. Now you can see my model is completely black. All the lines have now got a constraint. And if I click and try to move a line, I can't actually move it because it has all the information it needs to not allow me to edit it. Once your sketch is all black, it's good practice to try to constrain it so it's all black. Then we can finish our sketch. So I can click here and go finish. Cool. This just looks like the sketch in space. Now, if I want to go to a 3D view, I can click my middle mouse button and rotate, and I can see how that looks in space. I can zoom out. One little navigation feature you can go to is view orientation so if you click on that it zooms out and it gives you like this little viewport i can click on a face to preview so you can spin and move and use that to configure where you are cool now that's a closed loop what i'm going to do next is i'm going to create a extrusion or a solid from this so one thing you can do is Pre-select, so click on the sketch that you want to extrude and go extrude boss base. So under features, extrude boss base. Once you click on this, this brings up the extrude feature. Now at the moment, this little arrow, I can click on this and I can go down or up. I want this thing to go up. In fact, on the side here, I'm going to give it a dimension. So I want this thing to be 30 millimeters high, three zero. You can rotate it as you go to have a look at it. So if you want to change directions, you can also click on this. This is a toggle. You can go down or up. There's a few other options in here as well, but we won't play with them for the time being. Then we're going to go tick. So there's a tick there, and there's also a tick here. That's to confirm my feature. There we go. That's our little part. So have a play with the sketch tool, and there we go, there's our solid. What's cool in the software is that if I click on the top face, you can actually go in and you can drag and move what you've already built. So I can extend that higher if I want to. That's now at 80.6. You can double click on that dimension, make it whatever you want. So I'm gonna go 40. So I've changed my mind, I'm going to go to 40 now, confirm it, and it should update. Now one little thing is if you do make modifications within the model space here, this little icon here is a rebuild. Sometimes once you've changed something, you might have to click on that one to confirm it, and it will rebuild it. So there we go, there's our model. Now a little tip as well, these planes are still visible. So these will always be visible unless you tell them otherwise. And these are here in the model. So I can right click on one. So with your mouse button, use the right button on the mouse. You can right click and go hide. You can do that to all three and say goodbye. And there we go, there's your model. Make sure you save it, really important tip. And there is your basic sketch and extrude. So back in our model flow, we've had a play with the sketch. Remember that it's a 2D profile, closed loop, and you've extruded it. Well done. That is it for today.